Today we are talking about something that I get questions on all the time, how to remain disciplined, how to be consistent, how to find motivation. I get those questions all the time and sometimes I'm like, why are y'all asking me for? Like I struggle every single day. But then I look back on it and there's definitely some things, some tactics, some helpful advice that I can definitely relay on to you about how to avoid burnout, to find your motivation, to be disciplined, to be consistent. And I shared all of that good knowledge with you today. So grab your snacks, grab your wine, grab your water, grab whatever you need to, especially your notepad, because I dropped some gems on you today. So if you like content like this, if you're trying to find your motivation, go ahead, give this video a like, let me know what you think down in the comment section, and I will see you next time. Bye y'all. I bet if I give all my love, then nothing's gonna tear us apart. Welcome back to the channel. I am so happy to have you back. A lot of fun new products that I really want to try that I'm really excited to try. Uh, I like doing like chit chat get ready with me's because I get to like show products but also like chit chat and talk about stuff that I know that we're all passionate about. So I have a lot of fun products from Say. They sent me the gamut. I also went to Sephora and picked up some goodies um, and then we have some Fenty stuff. We have some stuff from Nude Sticks. So it should be a really good day in general. So let's just get to it. And of course, I will list all of the products that I'm using um, down below. So let's get right into it. So why are you even going to listen to me on this topic? Maybe you are new here. If so, hi, my name is Jasmine. I would love if you join the family. I basically had my whole life fall apart. Then it came back together, but it only came back together through daily habits, through morning routines, through the different things that I learned throughout my glow up journey, my reinvention of myself. So that's why I'm here to talk to you about it. If you're interested in that whole long story, I'll include a card right up here. Um, you can go and check that out. But the whole point of consistency and motivation and procrastination is just being able to prove it to yourself. And I would say nine times out of 10, the whole reason that we struggle with consistency is because we've for some reason have a negative feeling or emotion towards whatever task we're trying to achieve, whether that's to wake up in the morning, whether that's to work out, whether that's to eat healthy, whether that's just to be focused at your job, whether that's content creation, whether that's filming, whether that's being consistent, you know, communicating with friends, whatever it may be, for some reason we've attached a negative connotation to whatever task that may be. And it's preventing us from um, doing it. it so personally my rationale with things is if you are struggling to find motivation to do something nine times out of ten you don't want to do it and it's like really that simple you're like jasmine like what do you mean i don't want to do it i mean if i'm gonna be using um the gym just because it's such an easy analogy for me to use but definitely whatever I'm talking about just apply it to your own situation but it's almost going back to what I said about the negative connotation and the negative feelings towards it if you are struggling to motivate yourself to go to the gym you don't want to go you literally don't want to go that's why I don't really believe in motivation all the time because I think motivation is such an ebb and a flow um, there's too many it's too attached to your feelings when you're disciplined about something when you're consistent with something that kind of takes the feelings out of it and more puts in the habits and the routines and the lessons learned into it motivation is very feeling based and that's kind of what we want to get away from so if you're just kind of like jazz like hey so i don't want to do it so i don't want to work out this is where perspective comes into play your perspective is everything 
thing. Perspective is everything. It is everything in the whole world. I'm sorry if I look crazy right now. I just put on that primer. That's thing number one. I would move away from the motivation and I would lean more into the discipline and the consistency. When you can't stay motivated, stay consistent. So you might be like, Jasmine, how do I find my consistency? How do I start to find it? Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to know your why. Now, if you go to that video about why I dropped out of law school, why my life went up into flames, you will know the majority of my problem is I didn't have a why. And at the time, my why was rooted in money. And I don't think your why should ever be rooted in money. I don't think it should ever be rooted in anything materialistic. You will fizzle out so quickly. If your why to going into the gym is so that you can appear better for other people. If you're doing it for other people, you're not doing it for yourself, you are not gonna be consistent. You are you are not gonna find any type of motivation. If your motivation in the gym is like, I genuinely wanna feel stronger. I genuinely wanna live a long life for my children. I genuinely want to wake up in the mirror and look at myself and be like, I look so good and I feel so good. I'm so proud of myself. I wanna to go to the gym because it's genuinely an endorphins thing. Like I feel, I love, I'm addicted to the feeling after I come from the gym. Knowing your why and attaching a why to something is so much better. Do you see the perspective change? Do you see the why change? That's the first thing that you need to do. Now I wanna get into seven tactics you can apply today. I would recommend trying one of them. If that one doesn't work, try another one of them. Just seven tactics that you can use to improve your consistency, find your motivation, and remain disciplined in whatever you are trying to achieve. The first one might be the greatest one. I don't know, you're gonna have to decide, but it's something that I learned this year that I haven't heard too many people talk about. It's called starving your passion. Now, this is something a little bit more geared towards my creatives, but it is something over the past year that I have found so incredibly helpful that I just need to share it with you. And I haven't heard too many people talk about it. So let's talk about it today. The one thing that has really helped me with finding my motivation more so with doing things to avoiding burnout, especially with avoiding burnout, is I starve my passion. So if you're anything like me and you're very, very hard-headed and you don't like being told what to do, if I am told that I can't do something, it makes me want to do it even more. Now, because I know this about myself and because I'm super, super hard-headed, I applied this to my creative, my creative passions. So for one week, what I will do is I will tell myself, you cannot film this week. You cannot film, you're not allowed to film, and day by day I'll be like, no filming today, no filming, you can't do this, you can't do this. I guess you can even apply this to working out. You can't work out today, you can't work out today. It's something about that, it builds up the anticipation, it's like all of a sudden I wanna do it. I wanna do it, I wanna do it bad, and then all of a sudden I start thinking about all the things that I could film, and I could film this, and I could film this, and I'll write it down, and I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna film this very specific hygiene routine, like this style of hygiene routine just popped up into my head. And all these ideas will pop up into my head while I'm on this like time out. I've like put myself on time out basically. And then when it gets to the time that I'm like, okay, Jasmine, now you're able, now you can film. When it gets time to that, I am so much more motivated to film because I've starved my passion. This has been really, really helpful in avoiding burnout because I take like a dedicated break from filming. And I, but it also inspires new ideas while I'm taking that break. So my body isn't forced to take a break. I'm taking a necessary break and I'm starving my passion. And then once I'm able to film, I have all of these ideas I'm excited to do. I'm so much more motivated to film. Again, this is gonna be more so for my creatives. If you wanna get into content creation, I would highly suggest content batching, which I can make a whole video about it. That'll probably be on my TikTok. 
but also uh, starving your passion. Another tactic that I find super, super helpful is my top three. Um, so when you're planning your day, you're planning your week, you're planning your month, you're even planning your year, I only pick three things that need to get done for the day. What this does, it helps to reduce all the noise in my head. Like I need to do this, I need to do this. And it helps me prioritize and focus for the day. It also takes off like a lot less pressure for the day. So let's say the day for today, all that I need to do, my top three, is I need to clean the house. I need to go grocery shopping and I need to return this one thing to the postal office. If I can just do those three things, I will feel so accomplished for the day. It just condenses it and it makes things seem a lot less daunting. So I always have a top three of the day. When you're talking about motivation, when you're talking about consistency, things like that, getting into the mindset of doing things miserably. So I first heard about this on TikTok and I absolutely loved it and immediately I started applying it to my life specifically when I had to start going into the gym first of all first of all I'm a Pilates girly which I will get into later which also goes into discipline and motivation but I realized that I didn't have any cardio and I really wanted to start weight training which means I needed to go into the gym and I hate the gym I could never stay consistent with it because I hated it. Like it's, it was actually that simple. Like going back to if you're struggling to find motivation to do something, you actually just don't wanna do it. That was like me in the gym before I found um, Pilates, which I will get into later. But when I went to the gym, what I would do is I would set my expectations low with myself. So what I would do is just be like, you know, when you go to the gym, you just need to spend 10 minutes in there. When you go on the treadmill, you just need to be on here for five minutes. When you go to the gym, you just need to do one set. That's all that you need to do. Nine times out of 10 with whatever you're trying to do, if you mentally set your expectations low, nine times out of 10, you're going to end up being like, well, I'm already here. I already feel good. I already have the endorphins flowing. I already feel like accomplished because that was my goal anyway to just be in here for 10 minutes. I might as well stay a little longer. If you just say, I just need to eat one healthy meal of the day. One healthy meal. If that's a healthy snack, if that's a healthy something, it just needs to be one. I don't necessarily need to like it, but it needs to be one. I can do it miserably. I just, it just matters if I do it doing it miserably, setting your expectations low is such a mind trick. I guarantee you, once you eat that healthy meal, you kind of feel good after eating that healthy meal, you feel accomplished, you're like, I'll do it. You'll be like, you know what? I could eat a healthy meal for dinner. Now I'm kind of on this kick. I've already started to eat healthy and I do that every day. I set my expectations low and I go in and it doesn't matter if I do it miserably. Let's say like I go work out and one of my Pilates classes has a treadmill. One time I just walked the entire time on the treadmill, but I focused less on I walked the entire time and I focused more on I just showed up. Like that was an accomplishment for me to just show up and I celebrated that. I celebrated me doing it miserably. Sometimes you just need to do it. Setting your expectations low with something will motivate you to keep going and to achieve even more. In to my fourth tactic. This fourth tactic is really, really, really important if you are struggling with motivation. Again, I'm gonna go back to, if you're struggling with motivation, probably just don't wanna do that, and that's okay. You need to, one, again, change your perspective, and you need to focus on less on the action and more on the thing. Now, this can take two different ways. First way that I did this Again, I told you that I was struggling to find my motivation to go to the gym every single morning. I hated it. I had negative connotations towards it. I felt uncomfortable because I didn't know how many sets or reps. Um, I didn't know how the machines necessarily worked. I felt very, very awkward in the gym. And then at home, I found it hard for me to actually self-motivate 
in my own home, I'd always find an excuse to just not work out. The first thing I did is I just shifted my perspective. It wasn't that I didn't want to work out or I didn't want to feel good. It was the way that I was going about it. So when you talk about working out, what I found is that I'm a class person. I'm such a class person. I found class pass about two years ago. If you don't know what class pass is, um, I have a link below. It's actually one month free, which is like insane. But um, I've been paying for two years. This is like the first month that I've been an affiliate with them because I truly do believe in them. But it's basically where it's like a monthly subscription and you get a certain amount of credits and you can use those credits to pay for or sign up for classes in your area or wherever you're at. So if you travel a lot like me and you want to maintain your routine with working out, I just like look up where I'm at. Like if I'm in Tribeca or if I'm in Soho or if I'm in Miami, if I'm in South Beach or something, I just look it up and then I just use my credits to like pay for whatever class that's there. Um, I have never paid for a Pilates membership. I've never paid for a class membership ever again. This is going to sound sponsored. It's not. Um, but I say that all to say is I found that I was a class person. It was really motivating for me to work out with different people. It also kept me like really competitive and it made me like work out harder when I was around other people because I wanted to be the best in the room. It was also a really great chance for me to meet other people, meet like-minded people like me that also put me on to, you know, different workout clothes or different other workout um, places around the Atlanta area. So I found myself being so much more consistent with working out when I stopped going to the gym and actually found something that I liked. I'm gonna use another example. If you are struggling to eat healthy and stuff, maybe it's because you genuinely don't like to cook, like me. You genuinely don't like to cook, but you still wanna eat healthy, you still wanna feel good. So what I did is I signed up for Factor. This is not sponsored. I signed up for Factor, which is like, I, I didn't have to cook, but I had ready made meals, healthy meals available to me. And that availability, that convenience made me eat so much more healthier with so much like less effort. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna talk about the second way that you can kind of change your perspective and focus less on the action, more on the thing. If you are looking to work out and your why is I just wanna feel stronger, I wanna lose some weight, I wanna feel good when I look in the mirror, and every single day you're finding yourself hard to even go to a workout class, hard to go to the gym, anything. Change the action every single day, not the thing. Your goal should be more so I need to move my body for 45 minutes every single day. Whether I wake up on Monday and that looks like a hot girl walk, whether I wake up on Tuesday and I'm just not feeling it and I just wanna do some like yoga at home and some stretches, whether I wake up on Wednesday and I feel super motivated and I wanna to go to the gym, I wanna to go to my Pilates class, I wanna to go to my spin class, whether I wake up on Thursday and I, it's just a hot girl walk again and just some stretches. Your goal should be less action and more about the thing i just want to eat healthy today i just want to move my body today i just want to quiet my mind whether that looks like a walk whether that looks like meditation whether that looks like reading a book not being so strict on what exactly you have to do for that day to achieve that thing being more fluid in what that thing looks like per day because we wake up e different every single day and more just being like i just need to move my body for 45 minutes does that mean i need to like wake up and go to this 6 a.m pilates class no it just might look like a walk today but at the end of the day you know that you moved your body so loosening up those goals will help you be more consistent more disciplined and prove things to yourself if you are just consistent with the thing not so much the action I'm gonna go and do my eyes really quickly. I will definitely show you the lashes that I'm using, but I will be right back. Okay. I'm not in love with my lashes, but it's okay. Okay, <laughs> the fifth thing that I want you to try if you're struggling with burnout, with if you're struggling with consistency, if you're struggling with discipline, anything like that, is habit stacking. Now, habit stacking is so good. I first learned about it in Atomic Habit. I would highly recommend you read that book. That book is so good for developing habits, developing routines. It's actually one of the first books that I read when I was um, like trying to reinvent myself, trying to glow up, trying to develop a routine and everything like that. So highly recommend that book. But 
In that book, it talks about something called habit stacking. And basically what habit stacking is almost exactly as it sounds. It's almost like multitasking in a healthy way. It's pairing two healthy habits together to develop a new habit. Let's say you already take a walk every single day. Let's say you have a dog and let's say you already go on a walk with him or her every single day. If you're really trying to learn a new skill or you're trying to um, expand your knowledge or you're just trying to pour back into yourself, try listening to frequencies, try listening to morning meditations, affirmations, or even a podcast or an audiobook on your walk to develop that healthy habit of learning a new skill, of listening to more podcasts. It's such a good way to be consistent if you just pair it on top of it. Let's say you're already pretty consistent about going to the gym, you know, it's something that you do. Maybe what you do is you tell yourself, I can't go to the gym until I eat this healthy protein bar. If I eat this healthy snack, you know, I'm really trying to eat healthy and you just tell yourself, this is my routine. I eat a healthy snack and then I go to the gym. I eat a healthy snack and I go to the gym. And in your mind, your mind starts to pair those things and you start to habit stack. Welcome back, cutie pie. It's a change of robe situation right now. I was filming um, my hair. And now that we're done with everything, I wanna go through the last three tips that I have for you because they're some of my favorite tips. So let's just get right into it. Okay, I think we're on number six, romanticizing your habits. Now, this is where we start to get a little delusional. And if you really wanna stay motivated, if you really wanna stay consistent, if you really wanna have discipline, you've got to be a little delusional. You gotta trick yourself. I mean, most of these tips really are mind tricks to like get you over the line, to change your perspective, to change your thinking, to figure out why, to trick yourself, right? So I really re would recommend romanticizing. Not only, you know, we always talk about romanticizing your life, but romanticizing your habits. I remember when I was first trying to join the 5.30 a.m. club, wake up at 5.30 a.m., what I would do is I would play classical music in the morning. I would almost act like I was in the movie or I would act like I was in like a YouTube video or I would just be like, hey, y'all, like I wake up at 530 in the morning. The first thing I do is get up and I would have this like internal monologue in my head and I would just romanticize it. I would, I would act like I was in a movie or as I was on YouTube or I was in a camera or I would even like play a character and just be like, oh, like my higher self goes to Pilates. Like I got to go to my morning Pilates class. I would just romanticize all all of these things I would romanticize my workouts I would romanticize healthy habits I would romanticize like me on a cooking show and just talking through things like you've got to start romanticizing your life one it makes things so much more fun two it really does motivate you it makes it seem like the small habits the small daily habits they're not boring they're actually contributing to this larger thing it, there, there's some importance in it there's importance in this movie that you have in your head for yourself seventh thing that I would recommend you doing is future tricking yourself. The easiest way I can describe this is do you remember when you were young and it was like the first day of school and you had like your first day of school outfit planned and you laid it out on your bed or you laid it out in your closet and you were just so excited to go to school the next day. I'm pretty sure you didn't like school. It's not that you wanted to go to math class, but there was something that you attached positively to going to school in the future that was kind of dangling that made you want to go. I kind of apply it to the same thing in my life. What I'll do is once a month, I will treat myself to like a Lululemon set or an aloe yoga set or some type of workout set. And for some reason, it becomes less about the workout and more I'm so excited to put on that outfit. I'm so excited to see how it feels, to take some pictures in it, post some selfies, to work out in it. I would romanticize it. It was almost like this thing dangling like in the future. So like a lot of times when I'm like trying to eat healthy, what I'll do is like, I'll research a whole bunch of healthy meals on Pinterest and I'll maybe make a collage or I'll make like a, a meal prep bored for the week and it's all that attention into that prep and then all of a sudden the next day I'm like I can't wait to make that one meal I want to I want to see how it tastes I want to see how it tastes it less becomes about eating healthy about being consistent rather than just this fun thing that you're like attaching to it um, it's a great way to be consistent. It's a great way to be disciplined and it's a great motivating factor to whatever try healthy habit you're trying to build. 
Now we're going into eight, the last tactic. And I wanted to leave this one for last because it is, in my opinion, so helpful and so useful, especially for those that um, can't maintain a routine because they're just not routine people or you're a shift worker or whatever circumstance, your job, life, family, I don't know, will not allow you to maintain such a strict routine. It's like you look at the girls that are like my five to nine before my nine to five or the girls that wake up at 5 a.m., 7 a.m. And you're just like my schedule ebbs and flows every single day. Like, I don't know if I'm going to have three hours in the morning to dedicate to myself. So what I would recommend that you do to stay motivated motivated to stay consistent is almost a combination of all the tactics that I just talked about and it's called the dopamine routine focusing on just increasing your levels of dopamine rather than this very strict schedule or this very strict thing that you have to do will take the pressure off of it again this is almost a combination of everything that I've just talked about so what I would do is I would pick a big three you know I want to start waking up early in the morning I want to work out and I want to learn a new skill. That's the three things that I want to focus on. Again, we're moving away less from the morning routine and the night routine. There's just three things during the day that I feel like could really contribute to my day. Now, what you're going to do is you're going, that's when you're just gonna start incorporating is less about the action and it's more about the thing. Now you wanna work out every single day. All right, it's less about you making that 7 a.m. Pilates class or working out every day at 6 a.m. And it's more so I just need to move my body every day for 45 minutes. That's what I need to do. Just need to move my body every day for 45 minutes. Maybe it's less about waking up at 5.30 in the morning and maybe it's just I just need to wake up a little bit earlier today or I need to just go to bed a little later or I just maybe need to improve my sleep. So maybe on Monday it looks like you know what, I'm gonna wake up about 30 minutes earlier than what I'm used to. I, today, I'm really not feeling the hardcore workout. I'm just going to take like a hot girl walk today. And then on my hot girl walk, I'm gonna habit stack that hobbit, that hot girl walk. And I'm going to listen to a podcast. I'm gonna learn a new skill. I'm gonna learn a new language on my hot girl walk. I'm going to listen to frequencies. I'm gonna listen to meditations. I'm gonna to try to quiet my mind. And then at the end of the day, you look back on your day, and it's just like, I moved my body. I did something to improve my mind and I woke up earlier today. It's so much more satisfying when you're doing the little things to just increase your dopamine, you're, you are, you're accomplished something, you got those endorphins flowing, you're waking up a little bit earlier, you're, that should be your routine. It's less about a routine and it's almost like a lifestyle, just increasing those little amounts of dopamine throughout the day. So at the end of the day, you're like, I feel really good about today. It wasn't a strict routine because my days look different every single day, but I did stuff that genuinely made me feel good, whether it was for five minutes, an hour, doesn't matter. I hope you have found this video so helpful. These are all things that, you know, took me a very, very, very long time to learn how to do, but they're stuff that I don't always hear talked about. Um, and they're very practical things that you can start doing tomorrow. So hopefully you grabbed your notepad, you grabbed your snacks, and it was just super helpful for you. Um, leave a comment down below again, telling me what you're struggling to be consistent about, you're trying to motivate yourself. Um, and I, I'll be in the comments to respond back to you. I love talking to you back and forth. Um, you are so inspiring, you are so great. And I love hearing your perspective, like it really does mean the world to me um so yeah i hope you have a beautiful rest of your day definitely go ahead and check out my other videos subscribe if you haven't already go ahead and like this video if you like this type of content and don't forget to follow me on instagram especially tiktok if you want this same type of content but you just have a very short attention span um so yeah i hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and i will see you next time bye all